Hello and welcome. This is segment two of A Journey Through Assyrian History. Today's discussion is going to be on the problem with a continuous Assyrian history. What exactly is that problem? Now, a good number of historians have assumed that the Assyrians perished after the fall of their empire in 612 BC. In fact, up until a few years ago, among Syriac scholars and Assyriologists, the prevalent view was that no living people could truly call themselves Assyrian. Their view on the issue can be summarized as follows. The Assyrians have no connection, no connection whatsoever, other than the name, with the people who were in the ancient past, people that we know as ancient Assyrians. Some historians have even taken comfort in reporting the disappearance of the Assyrians, of the ancient Assyrians, as if the people had been the very embodiment of evil on earth. Quote, the Assyrians have no direct or linguistic survivors, stated anthropologist Carlton Kuhn, which is probably a mercy, end of quote. Quote, the Assyrians received no mercy as they had shown none, end of quote, explained historian Stuart Easton. Quote, the very people disappeared from history, killed or absorbed into a population of the conquerors, end of quote. The opinions of such writers as Kuhn and Easton have also influenced social scientists. For example, Anthony Smith, a well-noted sociologist who seems to be bewildered as to how the Assyrians disappeared. This theory of the disappearance of the Assyrians has influenced journalists and quote-unquote experts to question the ethnic legitimacy and the identity of the heritage of the Assyrians of today. These Assyrians explains a tourist geography book who are not descendant from the ancient Assyrians are actually Nestorians, end of quote. The authors of this book, which is on geography, never bothered to note that the Nestorians are a Christian denomination and not an ethnicity. As a result of such poor yet expansively broadcast scholarship, Assyrians in Iraq and elsewhere have had to endure the scrutiny of many whose pretensions to ethnography and history leaves much to be desired. More painfully, among the Assyrian people themselves, this question has led to poisonous debates and bigoted conclusions about those who side with one or another position on the question of the, the term Assyrian and can claim others who do not use the same word as being correct or being wrong. Now, astute scholars have always questioned the hasty conclusions about the Assyrian people's supposed demise in the ancient past after the fall of their empire, and are doing so particularly of late, as sources continue to show that, in fact, the Assyrians survived the disintegration of their independent political structure, their empire, and later their state. One of these scholars is Stephanie Daly, an Oxford Assyriologist, who has questioned the very idea of a completely destroyed Nineveh in the year 612 BC, and has discovered archaeological evidence to show the continuity of Assyrian history. Yet some historians and some church leaders continue to show varying degrees of intensity in opposing the very idea that modern Assyrians exist. Many object to the use of the word Assyrian in reference to any Christian Aramaic-speaking religious communities, i.e. Church of the East or Nestorians, Chaldeans, or Jacobites, stating that the use of the word is a mere manifestation of the irrational nationalistic tendencies of a segment of this religious minority. This group of scholars can be identified mainly as 
historians of Eastern Christianity or theologians concerned with spiritual, a spiritual chronicle of the Eastern churches. From this perspective, the history of the Eastern Christian communities begins with the advent of Christianity and the rise of the Syriac language from Edessa, a branch of Aramaic. There is little, if any, concern about the ethnic question or the ethnic origin of the people who were using this particular, particular language. There is no hesitation, however, when the question is posed on the part of most scholars to speculate. When Professor Michael Moroni, for example, gave a lecture on the history of the Church of the East at the time of the Muslim conquest, he named the ethnic groups present in Iraq as Arabs, Arameans, Persians, Kurds, and Turks. Yet when he was asked what happened to the Assyrians, he replied, quote, we just don't know, end of quote. Moroni's lack of knowledge about the fate of the Assyrians seems to come from a genuine disinterest about the subject. But there is something more. Historians of Syriac studies, such as Moroni, prefer to think of Nestorians, or members of the Church of the East, Chaldeans, and Jacobites as religious communities with no ethnic or national history and no national identity. Despite the fact that these religious minorities share a cultural and linguistic tradition that is united and coherent. The Syriac language being studied by scholars seems in many ways to be an abstraction and not any indication of an ethnic or national background or attribute. Attributes that others have but Syriac speaking Christians do not. Concerns with national sentiments by Assyrians are often viewed as primitive or intellectually swept away or attributed to an undesirable sentiment resulting from the encounter with modernity or westernization. The search for a national history is perceived as something artificial. Quote, bogus ethnicity, end of quote, is how Professor Chip Coakley refers to the revival of ancient traditions by modern Assyrians. More recently, Dr. Adam Becker's book, The Revival, Revival and Awakening, American Evangelical Missionaries in Iran and the Origins of Assyrian Nationalism, alludes to this myth-making or, quote, bogus ethnicity of the Assyrians. Like others before him, Becker refers to the invention of Assyrian national attributes as being, again, the result of encounters with the West in one form or another. These scholars neglect to understand the true nature of nationalism and its history from the West and other parts of the world, and focus on the Assyrians as being an isolated example that is odd and curious. It is unfair to state that scholars have no business commenting on the topic of continuity of Assyrian history. Certainly it is. They certainly do. However, by misstating the issues and viewing the topic of one perspective, such as scholars have done to, uh, such as scholars have done a disservice to the truth in history and to the Assyrian people themselves. Two scholars in particular deserve mention here, and they have dealt uh, with this issue with much insight. The first is Wolfhard Heinrichs of Harvard University. The second is Edward Odishu of Northeastern University. In a recently published volume honoring Constantino Serratelli, Heinrichs probes the question of modern Assyrian identity in a scholarly way, refraining from excessive judgments, as mentioned before, and generalizations. Edward Odishu's book, The Sound System of Modern Assyrian, quote, uh, in parentheses, Neo-Aramaic, provides a comprehensive and noteworthy survey of the continuity of the Assyrian history based on the linguistic connections between Assyrian Akkadian and Assyrian Aramaic. 
Heinrich's article, though disagreeing with the connection between the ancient and the modern Assyrians, delves deeply into the historical facts and leaves us much to consider and think about. Scholars who segment Assyrian history into categories that no longer fit together damage not only the continuity of Assyrian history, but the right of the Assyrian claim to identity and also to the truth and historical knowledge in general. As we carefully review the historical journey of the Assyrians, we will see that after the fall of Nineveh, the capital of the Assyrian state and empire, the Assyrians survived the rule of many nations and still kept their language, their culture, their geography, and ultimately their identity. We will prove through these archaeological and documentary and linguistic and artistic evidence that we are confronted with that the Assyrians indeed survived for centuries and are with us today. See you in the next episode of A Journey Through Assyrian History.